All right, Joe, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Hey, dude, how are you doing? Pretty good, you know, um, just trying to get back into shape. You know, they announced that uh, national tournament, so I'm trying to get ready for that. You know, kind of been a weird uh, time to be training, you know. Yeah, but just doing the best October, we can. Right? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, so, just around uh, the corner. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was, seemed like there was nothing on the horizon, just training. And then uh, out of nowhere, that came up. So I'm just like, well, I need to take any opportunity I can to compete. So right. <laughs> it's just right now, just trying to get back in, in really good shape. And then, uh, yeah, but it's fun, man. You know, having something to train for is fun. Yeah, talk about, you know, training without having, you know, like, a, you know, any – we don't really know what the next year's going to come. I don't know if I'm going to have a high school season or not. Um, yeah. Talk about for you, how did you keep motivation while you're training, you know, seemingly without, you know, cause, right? Without purpose. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I mean, it was a little in and out. And uh, I was, I remember when I like initially was asked about like, you know, because in the starting of the the lockdown, I had just got done qualifying the weight and I was, mm -hmm. I was doing pretty good and I didn't feel like I was affected really negatively. And then, uh, and then just a little while in, a lot of stuff happened, you know, like I lost my RTC spot and I had to find a new RTC spot. And uh, so it was kind of in and out of training. Um, so a lot of that stuff, um, I took a little time off the mat just to like let myself heal because I had a lot of right. um, little, in little injuries, which I think will be good in the long run. But uh, yeah, you know, kind of kind of let myself get out of shape a little bit so that I can heal because there was nothing you know but then you know like coming back and just knowing like uh you know it's going to get better and better you know it's hard right. it's hard to get in there but the better you get in shape the more you compete um the easier it is to keep doing the right things you know so um you know it's just building habits and a routine and uh, I've had a couple things this uh, time around that it kind of like knocked me off um, to where I had a I had to kind of improvise and try and get workouts and then sometimes like yeah it was just like uh, being pers purposeful even when I wasn't training like hey this is going to be good when the Olympics come around because I've needed some rest you know so some of it mm. um, and trying to be creative and thinking of like you know what makes what makes me perform well a lot of it is uh is stuff off the mat too so focusing on that when uh things are really getting tough like uh you know meditation helps me journaling helps me um goal setting and you know this is a good time to reevaluate things and then you know when you kind of get back in the room if you had to like get out of the room um maybe you'll be a little bit out of shape but you can be like uh you can know exactly how you want to go about training and uh you know, you can make adjustments, you know, like I make adjustments in my journal and my goals and like how I want to go about things. And the older I get, um, you know, the more things I kind of uh, am aware of and things that I have to do, uh, things that I know that help me, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, a lot of it's like things that are easy, but not easy to do consistently, like stretching and, uh, mm -hmm. and recovery and stuff like that. So yeah, man, it's been good. It's been a good reevaluation period, but it's definitely been, you know, not all positive. So mm. how long were you off the mat? Um, let me see, like, it's such a blur, you know, like I heard right. people say that it was seven months that since, you know, this whole thing started and that's crazy to me that's already been seven months. Um, I've been kind of on and off. I, uh, I think initially after Pan Ams and knowing that everything was going to be postponed a year, I think I took like a good two months off or something just completely. Um, and you know, going on walks every day and, you know, some, you know, stuff like that and like kind of trying to get in the forest, hanging out <laughs> with, uh, with my wife and my dog and like, you know, staying somewhat active, but, uh, you know, yeah, it's, there was probably two months or more where I wasn't on the mat. And then kind of when I joined the Illinois RTC, started practicing again um, consistently. And then we had the event where I wrestled Pat Downey. Mm -hmm. And then after that event, I took more time off um, after a couple of training camps. I got married recently. So, 
Yeah, it's been I'm getting back in shape. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, I took some time to get married and stuff like that. And then uh, then around that time, Nationals was posted. So I'm like, all right, dang. Well, I got a little bit out of shape, but I'm still okay. Mm. Now, when you first came back to the mat, you know, after joining the Illinois RTC and, and coming back after this hiatus, uh, did you find your timing or, or anything off, like was off from your, you know, your own personal wrestling? Yeah, I mean, that that's something I've like heard a lot, like uh, from a while ago. I think the first person I heard talking about that was like Sean Bourne Matt, like back when I was like, uh, when he was still doing overtime before he went to Michigan. And then actually my coach, Brian Medlin was just talking about today, like, you know, when you take time off, it's not like you forget everything, or, right. you know, it, it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's some parts are like riding a bike you know like that saying and then some things it's just like yeah you know timing's off maybe conditioning's off but I think like I think that the same things apply and like being out of shape is kind of an opportunity um to overcome like the uh you know the the adversity like at practice every day that's mm -hmm. in front of you like hey maybe this guy didn't stop training and he's in way better shape than me well I still got to find a way to win and I think matches are like that. Like, you're not going to be out of shape. Uh, you shouldn't be when the big match comes. But there's going to be always this feeling of being tired, no matter how good a shape you are. Or there's always an out. There's always, like, these instances and matches where, like, you have the opportunity to kind of, like, uh, sit back, which isn't good. But those opportunities always right. present themselves. So I right. think when you're out of shape, it's a good opportunity to, like, constantly have to be like, yeah, I'm tired, but – um, I'm going to still win this go. And, and uh, I mean, it's a good reminder to like, you know, continue to push yourself. And like, like you said, there's always going to be an excuse, right? There's going to be an excuse to, Oh, I lost this go because X, Y, Z, or I lost this match because, you know, all these, these reasons and, you know, acknowledging like, yeah, maybe I'm out of shape. Yeah. Maybe this guy's in better shape than me, or he's been on the mat. Um, and taking that in stride and say, doesn't matter. I'm going to be tough. I'm going to, to gut it out and you know I don't know I think that's that's definitely very important and I think it's I mean it's cool that you recognize that I don't know yeah it's a good opportunity to be stingy you know like because when you get tired it's mistakes. really easy to give something up or make mistakes or like a guy that normally wouldn't take you down you know he he or score on you and like it's really easy to to let them have one that day and to try not to, you know, in the face of being out of shape, I think is a really, uh, mm. it's a fun opportunity that, yeah, some way, shape or form, you're always going to be faced with that. So I think a big thing too, whenever you come back or, or anything like that, not comparing yourself to other people in the room and that's no matter what, not comparing yourself. And then like coming in with goals, like daily, like I usually try and write three focuses every day. And like today, mm. I got my journal right in front of me. It was focus on one technique, breathe, and stance. And what I mean by focus on one technique is like a lot of times when we drill, we're like working on a hundred moves. You know, we're just like, you do two, I do two. You do three, I do three. Like, and it's just like, I want to like, I try to some, you know, like make myself focus on one thing. So like, you know, and a lot of guys do that, but it's really easy to like try and pull out the kitchen sink and like you know it's good to be able to like focus on one thing and then breathing like a lot of times when you're tired if you like really kind of are like conscious of your breathing it'll help a lot you know um we get tired we try and and we start holding our breath it makes it worse and like a lot of like a lot of um controlling your breathing can help like you know when you are in shape when you are in big matches and I don't know if you noticed it, but I noticed in a lot of times if I'm not like telling myself, there's, there's a lot of like positions where I'm not breathing and uh, right. you just, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, I was thinking uh, about it the other day. Like, I'm like, man, I think I hold my breath every take, uh, time I, you know, take a shot <laughs> every single time. I'm like, just yeah. it in. oh man. Well, where did you, when did you learn about this? When did you learn about breathing and, um, and just start recognize it within your own wrestling? Well, I actually started working with like a, a, a meditation teacher like once a week at, that was provided at my college, which is really cool. We had this thing called like the uh, um, the wellness center. So people would go there for like minor things, like I got a cold, get some medicine or whatever. But I went there for this um, this lady to put me through meditation 
like once a week. And then I'd go, you know, and do meditation. I try to do it daily on my own. And, um, I think that like, however, like my personality make like come off like a goof around a lot. And I'm actually pretty uptight, you know, uh, internally I'm pretty uptight. And so learning how to relax, learning how to breathe has like been such a huge thing for me. And I think it's been the last 10 years. It's been like somewhere, somewhere in college. It wasn't like my freshman year. It was probably like my sophomore or junior year. I got really big into this. And then like, whenever I'm like about to compete, I really up it, but I try to like do it no matter what's going on. And, um, the same thing with journaling, uh, when I'm doing everything right, I, I like to build a routine where I wake up and I meditate before I do anything. And then I journal before I go on my phone and there's kind of like an hour of quiet time. And, uh, if I can, I'll eat before I'm on my phone too. But, you know, obviously some days are different. Like you, you got stuff to do, but, uh, right if you got the time, I think like that kind of stuff is really important. Hmm. And, um, and what about journaling? So I know you've mentioned this several times already, but it sounds like you, you have a routine and you, you try to maintain a routine of, of journaling every day. When did you start that? And, and why did you start that? Um, so like, there's a lot of wrestling camps. Like I know J Rob is big on this. And then like, I went to like Iowa intense and stuff like that, but it never really caught on with me until recently and uh you know I used to work at a machinery company when I was on Minnesota Storm for like a year and like I'd listen to a lot of podcasts and mm. and like other stuff and some of them were just like CEOs or random kind of uh you know people who are just really uh kind of uh just successful in their field and it was a common thread with a lot of people um and one guy really kind of um, I'm trying to remember who exactly it was because I just listened to so many different, you know, right. um, these kind of things. And uh, it's just kind of about like how to be a successful person. And it seemed to be a common thread. And the way this one guy laid it out just made so much sense to me. Um, and so then that's that kind of really started sticking probably probably like three years ago. Like I would, I, before that, I would fall in and out like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm like in another country or I'm getting ready for world championship. Like, and it was kind of more like, I'm, I'm going to want to remember all these lessons and these experiences so I can read it back and it's going to be like fond memories. But I would, those, I would kind of fall out of doing. And then the way that I journal now is there's like, there is like mostly that it's like, there's like free writing, just talk about my day, about my feelings. But then like, when it comes to training, it's more uh, three things to focus on at practice. And no matter what, like if I don't score a point, like it was a successful day if I do these three things. I have like really good days, like like today, like points wise, where I didn't really, I didn't really focus enough on my on my three things, you know. And then uh, I have three things for my day too. Um, and then like I have like a to do list. And I have a not to do list, you know, things to uh. avoid, you know, and then when I really get into it, I got affirmations and then like, uh, I'll like kind of also journal out like things I'm grateful for and be very specific hmm. to why I'm grateful for them. And, uh, and sometimes I do them all. Sometimes I just really jot down really quick what the three focuses are. Sometimes I'm just writing about my feelings, but either way I think it's better to put it out there than keep it in your head and there's like power to putting pen to paper and seeing it and, and seeing your goals and, and like affirmations like writing your goals like out um and how you're going to attain them and and a cool thing another cool thing is writing out like your goal as if that's who you are like I am Joe Rao I'm the 87 kilogram Olympic champion in Tokyo you know, and, and, you know, 2021, 20, you know, like writing that out every day, that's kind of like power. There, there's power to hearing yourself say that and meaning it. And then there's power to like writing it. And, and, and it's easier to believe it, the more you kind of do it. Right. And I know, um, I mean, there was, there was a wrestler who was a national champ and bef the year before he was a national champ, he just had it written down and he would tape that his statement, like I am, national champ 20 i don't know 2013 2014 national champ and he'd put it on his car steering wheel and he'd put it on his mirror yeah and like somewhere where he'd see it every single day so even if he doesn't necessarily have the time to go write it down he's still looking at it every single day and, he, and it's 
getting reaffirmed in his mind. Um, and I know that like personally, like I'm one to have a lot of thoughts in my head and I know that, um, you know, two things specifically, but like talking with someone, like if say like, I, you know, I have all these thoughts in my head, maybe I'm feeling emotional and I don't really know why, like, cause we've all been there. We've all had things swirling around, um, and struggle to get them, you know, get them out. Um, yeah. Like taking time to write them or taking time to talk about them, like helps you realize not only like what exactly your emotions are, but like how to, you know, your plan of attack, how to go forward from that, how to digest the situation and all that's going on. So, um, yeah, that's great. That's great that you can, that's great that you can, that you're already there. Like yeah. when I was in high school, the big reason why I think I wasn't successful is like, I didn't go to anybody for anything. And I kind of had this me against the world mentality. And I felt like I'm having all these problems. I'm thinking all these things and nobody can relate. And it's just, and it was kind of a right. pity party too. And I was working really hard, but like, I wouldn't go to people. I think it's really big. And like me too, um, a huge thing in my life that happened when I was around 18 was I actually started talking to people, you know, in my life. And not only, you know, it's for yourself, get them out of your head, but also like kind of know without complaining too much, let people know what you're going through. And, uh, and even just so that it's not just stuck in your head, you know, I think right. it's good. Um, I kind of came from like, I think an old world training and mentality of like, you know, don't, you know, don't burden people with your problems. And uh, I, I kind of thought that was the way you're supposed to be. And I feel like I just wasn't, I was keeping them to myself. Wasn't the way to go though. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like just looking, I mean, pretty objectively, do you think any therapist ever is going to say, oh, take that and just hold it in. Just don't talk about <laughs> it. You know, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that's, you know, accepted as the, the best thing to do, but. Um, yeah, but there's this old guy, like be tough, just be tough. Be thing. tough, right? And work yeah. through it. Yeah. Uh, man, I, I, I've, I've felt that before, but um, no, it's journaling is, I, I will say that journaling isn't something I do out of habit, but de I, which I, I should do. Um, but it's definitely something more of, like you said, like memories and like things that are going on, uh, like checking in, I guess you could say, but also if there's again, something going on in my life that I need to just work through. And so talking to people and, and writing it down are both things that I do. Um, yeah. But, I, I mean, I fall out of it all the time. So I right. don't feel bad. Like it's like, especially around hot, like really important competitions. I try and get myself in training camps to do it a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's still like months out of my, you know, months where I don't do it at all. And then I'm like, I really got to start doing that again. I really got to start doing it again. So like, yeah, you know, it'll come if that's something you want to do. And like, it could be really quick too. Like some days it's very abbreviated. And then some days it's really like, if I have the time, I really go into everything. Mm. And that's, that's good that you like set it for yourself as a, as a part of your routine. Like before I even pick up my phone, before I check social media, you know, and like, I mean, anyone will say like, I mean, I'll say it. Social media is probably the worst part of me, right? Like, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's, man. it's a vacuum and it sucks you in and you waste time and you come unfocused. And there's a lot of st negativity surrounding social media and especially to, today. Um, but I mean, that, that's really, it's really admirable that you, you know, you, you separate yourself. Like before I do any, anything on my phone, I'm just going to take time and, and, and journal and, and meditate and, and things like that. So yeah, man, um, those phones are addicting. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're, yeah. Man. Perfect. Perfectly designed to just waste all your time. Absolutely. Um, man. Joe. So you had, you had mentioned like, you know, you took a hiatus, you came back uh, and then the fight night thing happened. How long did you have to prepare um, before you know you knew you were going to compete at that uh you know what what was it called the rumble on the rooftop yeah How long i think did you it have was to prepare for it? i think it was like two or three weeks mm. and uh but i do think that my style i think that the reason why i win is like if i have my mind right, right. kind of the things we're talking about so like being in shape i would have been nice to be in shape but i i knew i could still win you know, if I just had the right, you know, had my head on right. Did so, you do any uh, freestyle prep? Yeah, I mean, I wrestle like 
a lot more freestyle than any other Greco guy. I wrestle mm-hmm. freestyle pretty much every day, um, most days, you know? And then, like, I have, like, big camps where I'm just doing Greco. So, like, almost every every one of my days is kind of Freco, you know? I got guys, yeah. you know, not all of them, but, like, the majority of them. And I actually prefer that. I, I, it's fun for me, and I think it keeps me uh, – it keeps me, like – in good spirits it keeps me because like for whatever reason like I, I just always trained all styles so whatever reason when I got to focus on like just one style even if it's if it's my favorite style sometimes I just like need to break up the monotony and uh right and it's it's fun man uh it's just fun to wrestle freestyle and folk style so I think I was wrestling like yeah probably majority freestyle leading up to that because I wasn't even going to do the Greco period yeah he, he, he wanted to do that <laughs> oh, oh man that's actually pretty cool um, yeah joe do you think that wrestling freestyle and wrestling folk style helps your greco yeah absolutely for me it does and i know there's plenty plenty of greco guys that will disagree with me but um for me i mean it keeps you in great shape and you know it makes you chain wrestle more than like i think traditional greco will and it's a different kind of frame of mind. And I really like play wrestling and scrambling and stuff like that. Yeah. And if you get a really good guy that doesn't have like a lot of ego and Greco, you can play wrestle really like, you know, and it's really fun and you're in a lot of positions. But like, I would say like a lot of Greco guys, you're like wrestling like one of the best guys in the country, but you're leaving like after a whole week of training and you're just like, barely any scoring going on and for right. me like I just like scoring I like like mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of stuff happening and and like most of my Greco partners will tell you or anybody I train with like I play wrestle so much just because I like I'm just like let's do something like we both can yeah. flex yeah. and stop each other from scoring and I think that's just like something about Greco so I think it keeps me active and offensive and like I think uh but I can't you know I there's got to be a balance right I can't mm-hmm. just do freestyle um but i gotta do majority greco with like a ton of freestyle and i think that my recipe for success is like is having fun you know and yeah like putting myself in a ton of positions and flowing and and chain wrestling and i just think that a lot of greco um guys kind of stop that from happening so then i have my hard greco goes and camps and but i'm like staying in shape when i come home and i'm doing like these freco you know practices i'm staying in shape but it's also kind of like a mental like recovery because you know you're going to one of these hard camps it's like two days at greco and it's all gut wrenches and pummeling and stuff like that and then i come home and i'm gonna still get in great shape but i'm just like flowing around and and there's something there's something special to like not to wrestling the style that you like care about less you know what I mean right right I'm not competing in freestyle and folk style anymore so like I think it gives you an extra edge because like the college guy is going to want it too bad and you're just like hey man I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna just (laughs) yeah I got nothing to lose and I got a better presence of mind uh I think because of it because they care too much and then I'm just like all right well (laughs) you know know? so it's just fun for me and it and it's the I think that uh it's just who I am, you know, it, 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 uh, it helps me more than it would, uh, hurt me. But I had a lot of Greco coaches that really didn't like it. Like I've, I've even, I've had a lot of problems with old coaches because of how much folk style and freestyle I wrestle. Oh man. How can you ever be good at Greco if you wrestle other, other styles? <laughs> how could you ever right. do it? Explain that one to me, dude. Um, and I know that like on the other way, so I am, I mean, I'm a high school kid. I'm going to my junior year. Uh, and like, I, I do wrestle freestyle. Um, and, but like what I did, it, I think last, last spring going into the, whatever, PAWF, the freestyle tournament, um, I wanted to qualify for the RTC programs. And so as a backup, I'm yeah. like, all right, if I don't do it in freestyle, uh, we're going to, we're going to get good at Greco. Just, you know, because they take, they take top four either way. So yeah. Um, but what I was really surprised to find is like, uh, Greco really, really helped me positionally. Like, you know, absolutely. Especially having not, you know, consumed much Greco wrestling and or not even even practiced it that much going into it, I was like, what am I really in, coming in for? 
And uh, man, it helped me positionally, positionally in my hand fighting. Um, it's, it's a much different feel. Uh, and it, it's a lot more like, I mean, something that stuck out to me was it was a lot more like a chess match. Um, yeah, absolutely. Little, little, little tiny positional battles um, that I was able to appreciate. Now I have a greater appreciation for Greco wrestling now. Whereas Sam Herring, I'll drop his name on the podcast. He's like, my partner, <laughs> Heck yeah. He's like, ah, I don't like watching Greco. It's, it's <laughs> slow. It's boring. I'm like, dude, but you haven't wrestled Greco. You don't, yeah. you can't really appreciate it as much. Um, you appreciate it more. Like, yeah, if, it, if you see a guy like Ryan Mango just throwing all these people off Right. Six, Did you see like, that one, that, that backflip he hit? Yeah. Yeah, oh my absolutely. Gosh, I was like, you're like, whoa. <laughs> it was ridiculous. You know how hard that is to do, you know? And, but like for him, it's like effortless. Right. You know, for me to do something like that, it's so hard. But, oh my yeah, gosh. I mean, it's it's who you're watching, too. Like, stylistically, you watch, like, me and Provisor or Pat Smith wrestle somebody. It's going to be a lot of, like, nuanced little things. It's not going to be, like, these giant throws. But if you watch Tracy Hancock or Kamal Bay or Ryan Mango, it's like, I mean, that that's, like, awesome to watch. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, I can see what he's saying, too. Like, it's funny, like – my my roommate Zane Richards and he was just like are you watching freestyle like all like the other night I watched like hours of wrestling and I didn't watch like a single Greco match I'm just like but I have like a whole bank of like videos and it's it's just all styles and sometimes it's not even wrestling and like I think studying movement is like a right. huge thing like people will disagree with me but I think like um watching the you know a judo guy throw and watching a Greco guy throw or watching like things that people do in freestyle like there's a lots of like ways that you can connect things and I think like just your wrestling IQ can just get bigger and bigger the more styles you study and like mm. there's so many positions but a really good Greco wrestler can apply his Greco really poorly in freestyle and vice versa but a really good Greco wrestler can actually apply his Greco amazingly in freestyle and it's just kind of if you really kind of wrestle it all a lot and you throw it in a blender you're gonna find a way to annoy the hell out of freestyle guys as your greco yeah. <laughs> and, and uh yeah man my my freestyle got at its best when i wasn't even wrestling it i was wrestling only oh. greco and i was just showing up at like the last chance you know and i qualified <laughs> for freestyle trials twice and i wasn't training any freestyle i was just like oh man <laughs> you know oh man that's awesome yeah and it's uh it's weird man it's definitely bizarre um all right so joe let here let's let's take it back all the way back um and just tell us you know who are you who the heck are you where did you gr where are you from where'd you grow up how old are you you know the mini bio on joe rao all right i'm i'm from chicago and hey I'm me too are you really yeah i was i was born in chicago I hell yeah like, man three or four years and then we moved to state college PA, but that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, I was just riding back from my, uh, from get, I got married out of Massachusetts. I stopped in PA just to see where I would be wrestling. Yeah. I stopped, I stopped over uh, by, by the big arena. That's awesome. But, uh, that's probably like five minutes away from my house. Really? That's yeah. crazy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man. I stopped, I stopped. I got like some tacos in town mm -hmm. at this little food truck. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm I'm from Chicago. Um, I pretty much stayed in Chicago other than when I moved out to Minnesota to join the Minnesota Storm after college. Like, I went to a small school, Elmhurst College, and it was, you know, 12 minutes into the suburbs from my house. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, man, I started wrestling when I was six. Um, I had some success, but my MO is kind of, I didn't win anything huge until after high school like the summer after high school I won Fargo and then I All-American in freestyle and it was kind of just like who the hell is this kid you know yeah. and then I've just I've just ran with that success ever since you know and uh for me it was all it was all mental you know hey <laughs> and uh it's crazy like there's just a huge shift and it, and it happened on accident uh and uh, accident. my whole my whole career took off yeah what do you what do you mean on accident oh well, I gave up man i i like i was like i identified as one of the hardest workers i knew and you know i wrestled since i was six and things just weren't really happening for me uh i qualified for state once and i went zero and two 
And, you know, I was wrestling freestyle and Greco all summer long and folk style and going to every tournament. I was part of like multiple clubs and uh, I was like, felt like I was doing everything right. Um, but like looking back, I think I cared too much. I think I scouted too much. I think mm. I uh, look at the rankings too much. And then after going on to in state, like my, my goal is to be a state champ. Right. Right. And uh, I went on to the one time I qualified. So then, uh I just kind of quit and like I mean it was I was done with my high school season but I kind of just right. gave up on life I was like a really good student I kind of just st like almost I almost didn't even like pass some of my classes and I was pretty much oh. a straight A student all through high school and I was just super depressed I got super fat I wasn't in the wrestling room at all that summer and uh I think my club coach Mike Powell thought I was dead he like joked about it oh and then gosh. I just my brother came home from Iraq and Afghanistan. He just got me back in the weight room a little bit. But for the most part, we were just lifting weights and eating burritos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, I was at Fargo the year before at 160. So this year, I just showed up to Freestyle State at 215, and I won oh Freestyle State. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh. <laughs> And my my first like summer uh, I can remember not training was this summer and I won freestyle state that's something I never done before and then I t actually took second in Greco state because I didn't know the rules because I wasn't wrestling that year and I yeah. lost like one point by this parterre rule. Anyways, like it used to be that if you didn't get turned and it was zero zero you got a point. Um, but then it was or it was like if you didn't get turned you got a point and then the next year it was only if it's zero zero. So I didn't know that. So I was like down 1-0, but I was like, oh, he's not going to turn me. I'm going to win 1-1. Right. And uh, then I lost. But then uh, I ended up I ended up going, you know, to, to Fargo, still chubby, 215. And I ended up winning Greco. <laughs> and then I ended up All-American in freestyle. And it was just because, like, I gave up. And I didn't care. Mm -hmm. And I didn't look at the brackets. And I didn't stress myself out. And I just focused on what I can control because I was kind of just like, I was coming out of just like a huge depression, you know, and I wouldn't even call it a depression. It's just sadness. Like yeah. depression is kind of more when you like are sad and the, you don't really know why, like I was sad and I knew exactly why, like I put in all this work and I wasn't, I didn't achieve any of my goals, you know? And, uh, and I felt like my work ethic was like match the guys who were national champs and, and state champs and doing all these great things. And a lot of my friends were those guys and it just didn't happen for me. So I was just super depressed. And then I just, basically I just showed up to freestyle in Greco state. And then I did the camp leading into Fargo. And I was like, I, I didn't have a care in the world. Um, I didn't look at anything. Uh, I just showed up and I just wrestled one match at a time. And I was like, Hey man, I got, I got something here. And this wasn't all for nothing. And like, wow. Like, and then I kind of came back and I kinda tried to, like do that same thing in my mind every time I compete more or less like of course I made adjustments but whatever happened there accidentally was not caring you know yeah. not caring and wow. just fighting um I try to hold on to that like the essence of it you know there's been a lot of things since then I was 18 that was 11 years ago but pretty much try and do that um and then I brought the work ethic back when I got to college you know because oh that somewhere it was the first summer I didn't really work hard but I accidentally figured something out that uh <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah that's wild how did you get introduced to wrestling like why did you settle on this sport oh man well yeah that's that's a crazy story too is uh I, wrestling found me man I uh I was just like a little scrappy kid. This whole, this whole thing is just by chance. Every single thing about it. You're just like, yeah, it was yeah. an accident. I won Fargo. It was an accident. I <laughs> even started wrestling. It was just, you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah, gosh. man. Well, well, usually, I, I mean, I had a lot of intention behind most of my career, but these really big moments, like a lot of them, I had no, I, had no, <laughs> I had no control over that. It just oh, happened. Oh, my gosh. But, uh, and that's kind of how a lot of these things happen, you know, like, and that's why you stay in the fight. You have good years and you have bad years. But mm. if you if you actually give up, you know, like you're never gonna find out. Like I have this whole backside of my career that's been amazing. You know, I've been on like world teams and all these other things. And like if I would have quit, I would have never known that all this yeah. was like waiting for me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 
but yeah, I got into wrestling at six and I was lucky, but, uh, because I wasn't like a, a wrestling family. I actually was just like getting into a lot of fights, <laughs> you know, in my, in my neighborhood and, and, uh, we had like a big front yard, but no gate. So like kids treated my yard, like the, like the, you know, a park. <laughs> They're always Did you kids have grass? Playing. Yeah. Whoa. So there'd, when there'd I was be kids. in Chicago, it was no grass. We were in an yeah. apartment, no grass. Oh yeah, we had a house and it was like in the back a lot. So we had a big front yard with like Whoa. a patch of grass. A big yard Ooh, for a Chicago fancy, block. Fancy, fancy, yeah. fancy. But all these oh, kids man. would be playing and they would tell me I couldn't play with them. So of course I got in a lot of fights. I'm like, you're in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They're yeah. like, no, go home, go home. And you're yeah. like, no, this is, this is my home. <laughs> yeah, get off my yard. Oh my gosh. But, but uh, yeah, and, and I had an older brother who's like three and a half years older than me. So then it was kind of always like, oh, if you go out, you got to bring your brother. And, you know, my older brother didn't want to bring me and his, him and his friends, you know, were like, oh, okay. You know, his friends would tease me and I get into fights with a lot of older kids. And then when they got in fights with older kids, I'm getting in fights with kids like so much older than me. So I kind of just got, I was just known for being really scrappy and I would fight anybody. And they used to call me Mad Dog because I would fight anybody. And if I was losing, I just bite them. <laughs> but uh yeah from a young age i was this just crazy kid um yeah man it's funny my brother like remembers this one time and i do crazy stuff like this too it was always like i was always small so i had to up the crazy but one time he was fighting these kids older than him and i literally climbed up this like playground and i jumped on top of the kid like <laughs> from way like way up on top of this like elevated playground oh my gosh but uh yeah, so I was I was doing things like that, but mostly because I got teased so bad, and I had like I talked really funny. I couldn't say car; I said like cow and, and stuff like that. So I was just the runt, and I got made fun of a lot. So I just would get emotional and get in fights. But across the alley from me, there was this uh, guy from Poland, and his son was wrestling, and his son was friends with us, and he kind of just kept telling my parents like oh you should get him into wrestling because like he's watching me play basketball and football and baseball and getting into fights he's like you know you should let him wrestle yeah, you should. and uh they finally they took me to like just the chicago park like wrestling day thing and uh, it was just like a one-off and like i was just such an aggressive kid i just like chased all the other kids around like none of them want to wrestle me i was just like so aggressive and uh and the guy at the end of it was like yeah you got to get him on a real team so then they uh they let my neighbor like show me you know what a real wrestling team is and uh i got a cup in a couple fights in the starting but then i kind of fell in love with wrestling like really was and uh yeah he kind of took me around for a long time and then when i was around like 11 or 12 he ended up getting arrested and put it into prison and then deported because he was in the Polish mob and we didn't even know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So it was crazy, man. But, but I felt wow. like I owed my life to him. And then, so then I didn't see him for a long time, you know, from like 11 or so. And then when I made my first world team at 23, I, I flew out to Poland just to see him. No way. Now yeah, you're and colluding I, with the Polish mafia. You're just deeply ingrained. He's not in it anymore, but it was uh, just a business trip, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh I did some, I did some clinics for like some MMA guys he knew, and he was like, he's like totally out of it. He's totally different, but he's like, yeah, some of these guys don't hang out with them. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome! Wow. Yeah. Dang. Okay, so when when did you ever get introduced to freestyle and Greco? So. That guy, actually, he took me to, like, a freestyle tournament. I have, like, a, a faint memory of it. Like, he took me to a freestyle tournament once, like, as a kid. And I got, like, tuned up. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, like, I don't like this. <laughs> but then right. uh, when I got older, like, I started – I watched a lot of Greco. And, like, in my freestyle – or in my folk style, I, I did, like, a ton of upper body, like, attacks. And I think it's the way I'm built. I'm just, like, really strong, especially – the covered body and I liked underhooks and two-on-ones and I would bear hug a lot of people and, and try to throw so like um and maybe that was also because he would show me some things like that and I didn't even know that he was kind of showing me um these techniques that were probably more freestyle or Greco but um 
but yeah, I didn't end up actually focusing on any of it until after my sophomore season of high school. I found the the Oak Park River Forest High School, and I also found Overtime School of Wrestling. I, I mean, this is before uh, a long time ago. It used to be like the like premier club of the country, and Sean Bormat Sean Bormat ran that, and no uh, and John Cading ran that, and like a bunch of bunch of guys ran state champs and big you know like Bormat's a huge coach mm. and Kerry Bauman's he he um actually won one out of the two one out of the three um trials matches against brands so we had like these introduced to like freestyle from like the some of the best guys like you know Bormat's like you know he's he's coaching Cliff Keen in right. Michigan now so it's it's crazy that that was my introduction and then Mike Powell at Oak Park he was like my introduction to Greco and uh we just dueled them every year and like my high school didn't wrestle anything in the off season like none of them did anything other than a camp and so then I was kind of like a solo mission like and I kind of was just getting getting the in to like a lot of different teams and clubs that I wasn't even a part of and then them kind of like uh you know taking me in and uh letting me kind of work out and <laughs> yeah I, w- I would stagger my days you know I would go to like overtime three days a week and then I go to Oak Park two or three days a week and then I go to tournaments you know on the on the, weekend. on the weekends and you know so it was uh that's when it started man and I started really kind of even before I ever did anything really big I was I was having more success in freestyle and Greco than I was in folk style mm. and what do you attribute to that I think it's kind of what happened on accident when I yeah. when I uh you know because like we got coaches and we got a lot of like all our focus is folk style. And, uh, I think that I, the, the, well, for one, the, the playing field is kind of levels in freestyle and Greco. Like most guys, you know, it's their first time trying it, especially Greco. So it's not like a lot of guys have something I don't, you know, like, uh, like, you know, a lot of guys have like the mindset or they're more mature faster in high school. But, you know, when it comes to Greco, just the sheer wrestling of it, most guys don't step into it and know what they're doing. So um, we're kind of starting at the same, uh, you know, at the same level. So that's part of it. And then the other part of it was like, yeah, my, my high school coaches weren't making me do it. It was something I was doing on my own for fun. And, and like Illinois had a ton of tournaments called developmentals where they they literally were just to get matches in. So there wasn't like a lot of pressure. And uh, I usually went to a lot of things, went to a lot of things even without a coach so it's just like I'm just going with my buddies just to try and toss some people you know like and uh that that kind of and of course I wanted to win everything but you know what I mean it wasn't what folk style was like there was a lot riding on folk style I had a lot of people screaming at me like a lot of people care and then freestyle and Greco I mean my high school team didn't even wrestle it. So it was kind of my own venture. And I also kind of got to be my own boss. Like I was part of these, all these clubs, but I also found a lot of stuff uh, about myself and, and to be able to be the guy who's like behind everything. There's a lot of like empowerment to that. You know, like uh, if, if my high school coaches were forcing me to do it, I don't think it would have been the same thing for me. Mm. So it, it was your, it was your own personal motivation. Hey, yeah. Joe, I have a question. So, I- Illinois primarily is, you know, the gold standard for freestyle, you know, the foreign styles, um, you know, as a state, right? Like, they win yeah. Argo routinely. They have tons of All-Americans, champs, you know, yearly. Um, what do you attribute to that? Why do you think that is? Well, a big part of it is that – the the guys I was talking about, I was talking about Mike Powell from Oak Park River Forest. Mm-hmm. He's just developed so many people into like great Greco wrestlers and freestyle wrestlers. And then the other guy is Brian Medlin, who's actually my coach now. Um, he was the head of Team Illinois for forever. And uh, mm-hmm. he he's now the, uh, you know, University of Illinois RTC coach. And, uh, and you know, he's coached. Um, all these guys, yeah, who went on doing huge things, but I think that a lot of it was that he had a senior level career, and there were a lot of other guys from Illinois um, at the time, especially in Greco, that had senior level careers that came back, 
And in the starting, there was guys like Board Matt that was coaching all these guys in freestyle. And then we had Izzy Style, Israel Martinez coaching all these guys in freestyle and Greco. And I think that we had a lot of guys with a ton of experience and ton of connections with guys wrestling um, freestyle and Greco on the senior level. And like, and guys who are actively wrestling it coming back and giving back to the kids consistently every year as coaches. And I think that, yeah. And then once we start rolling, once you start building reputation uh, of, uh, <laughs> of winning and being a little feared and being a, like, uh, this is the expectation also. Right. Um, I think that that just helps give you a lot of momentum, but it also kind of became the cool thing to do where in a lot of States, I feel like it was like, we were getting their, getting their best wrestlers to wrestle Greco and freestyle was like pulling teeth. But in our state, the top guys wanted to wrestle it. And in mm -hmm. some years, the top guys like wanted to, to wrestle like Greco and they didn't want to even double up in freestyle. And it was like, it's a, it was something I didn't really see that much in other places, maybe in Minnesota a little bit, but for us, like kids wanted to wrestle it, you know, it was that the cool thing good. to do. You know, and we would just bring these huge teams because everybody wanted to be on that team. Right. Right. Man. Yeah. And I know that in PA, like, it's it's gotten better. But even, like, just this year, there was this kid that I was wrestling with. He's a three-time state medalist. Um, and he's going to go wrestle at George Mason. And he took third this past year at the PIAA State Championships. And we were at a practice. And he said, Jude, this is my first ever freestyle practice. <laughs> and, like, you know, he's – 19 years old he's gonna go to college next year and like yeah. this is the first time he ever even stepped in a practice that crazy had done it. i was like wow and like i don't know it's 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 a kind of a different world because like you said like you know Il illinois especially you have those top guys they're like all right folk style season's done on to freestyle on to fargo on to cadet titles and things like that whereas you know Pen pennsylvania i can speak for pennsylvania because you know i'm a Penn pa native uh, it's not the same focus. Like the, the, the kids who love wrestling and the kids who, sh you know, who are going to practice all year round. Yeah. They're going to try it. Um, but maybe not incredibly seriously. Cause there's just like, there's not a ton of depth. Yeah. It's mostly folk style. It's, it's, mostly and, uh, style. it's crazy. Like, I remember like what really, really, like one of the things that really got me to want to wrestle and be on that team and just being aware of like, we're aware of a lot of things. We're not even just, and it's different now. Like everything's on flow. Everything's on social media. Like when I was in high school, it wasn't exactly the same. Like you can be a wrestler and not even know what this stuff is. Yeah. Or you've just heard of Greco or heard of freestyle, but you don't know where to go to practice. And you don't know, like you, I had to like really seek it out, mm. you know, and find I, these things and, and find these websites that like told you where the tournaments were and stuff like that. Um, I did an interview with someone not that long ago. and They didn't know that there was wrestling outside of high school. They didn't know that you could yeah. wrestle in college. And in, in the Olympics, it's crazy. Like that. I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's it's, wild. I mean, it's, it's almost like uh, like a whole different world, right? Like I can't, yeah. I can't even imagine what it's like. I can't imagine what my life would be like without flow wrestling and social media. Yeah. And like all this awareness. It's good and bad, man. Like right. there's, there's so much technique at your fingertips and mm -hmm. you can – you, like you kind of have coverage of all the top guys and how they tick and what they think like and maybe even what they do um which is good but then also like there's too much out there right. there's almost too much that it's hard to focus on one thing and then also i think like it's it's bad because you compare yourself to other people and then mm -hmm. and like i don't know like there's so many there's so many great kids out there um but i think for a lot of kids sometimes the focus of like is it seems like just to look cool like be good but also look cool you know, <laughs> you know like and that's kind of there was the kids like that when I was wrestling like in yeah. high school too but it's just yeah, like Instagram just really rewards that and it's just kind of like um I know a lot of examples of guys who are barely on and like I used to be like on social media so much and I've taken a huge step back mm. and I've done that a couple times and I like really like when I do it but um, yeah, you really feel like you're missing out, even though you're not. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah, no. I the other the other week I was like, all right, I I'm just gonna I'm gonna just put my phone away, and I just like turn yeah. it off and put it in a drawer. Then you know the next day or a couple of days later, I was like, 
I, I remember being like almost anxious, like kind of laughing at myself <laughs> still, but like, I want to go check my phone. I really want to see what's up. And I was like, what did I miss? What did I miss? And I'm like, two notifications. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing happened on Twitter. And, and like, I was like, what am I, what do we get ourselves worked up about? I'm yeah. Sorry, it's, daily, it's weird. Daily. I don't know. It's weird, That's man. Strange. But yeah, like, like what it, it being the cool thing is like, there was a highlight video made of just the national duels. The first time, mm. I don't even know if we took first that year. It might have been, I think we did, but it could have been also the year that we took second. But it was just like this awesome highlight video of like all these guys, like tossing people and, and Illinois, like, you know, being in the national finals and, and, uh, you know, being national champs. I'm like, man, I want to, I want to do that. I want to be part of that. And I was actually only on the national dual team once and we won nationals that year, but the one, the year I won Fargo, actually, they didn't, uh, they didn't ask me to come. I even like approached them. Like, can I come? They're like, no, <laughs> we got like, no, somebody else. So I was Fargo. Like, yeah. Like yeah exactly. <laughs> but bizarre. you know, they, yeah, they didn't know how good, I mean, it was before I won Fargo, but I just had taken second at Greco state and I'm like, Hey, I want to, I want to be on that team again. They're like, no, like, we're going to bring somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Not, I'll just go win Fargo. Yeah, exactly. But you. like, we wanted to do it. It was a cool thing to do, and like, yeah, I don't know. I think they promoted. They started to promote it, like in in little ways like that too. That like mm. just made it look like fun. Mm. Joe, when did you know that you wanted to compete Greco on the senior level? Well, man, it's it's funny because it kind of just seemed like the the option that made sense, mm. and um because I was actively wrestling freestyle and Greco in college, which like a lot of guys do now, but not, not that, not, it wasn't as much when I was in college, but especially I was wrestling at a division three college. So especially right. that you're not, there's not like anybody wrestling Greco and freestyle, maybe a handful of guys even try it, but I was doing it consistently. And while in college, I was already like ranked seventh or something on, in Greco and like I don't really care about rankings but you know I had to use that to get my foot in the door in places like hey I'm like you know I'm up there like I'm just a guy you know because people didn't even know who I was um but it was actually way harder than you would think uh it was just because as far as picking like a crazy part of me wanted to do freestyle instead of Greco but there was just no opportunities so part of why I went Greco is like, yes, I love Greco and I've had the most success in it, but also it was, it was like the opportunities I had to keep wrestling. Like I just wanted to keep wrestling. Um, and I want to be an Olympic champ. And, and I think most of my life visualizing myself winning the Olympics, like for, for most of my life, it was in, it was in freestyle. The vision was in freestyle, <laughs> you know, but uh, I had opportunities in Greco and I, I look like a crazy person a little bit because uh, I, I'm a D3 guy. I was like, I'm going to wrestle on a senior level. And like, I was kind of doing it, but like, like guys were like, you're not going to get an internship. You're not going to get a job. Like, no, I'm, I'm just going to go wrestle. And uh, I wasn't really getting paid in the starting. And then I like had success like shortly after that. And, uh, and I kind of just took off and, uh, and that kind of, that helped me stay with it. But, you know, to be able to be on a team and get sponsored and start getting paid to wrestle, I'm just like, whoa, man. I used to, like, joke around and put my occupation was wrestling when I was in high school. It's, like, right. actually my occupation <laughs> now. It's pretty surreal. Wow. It's, it's pretty, you know, special. But, um, yeah, I love Greco, but I'm one of those guys that just loves all wrestling. But uh, I, picked, I picked it because that's where the opportunities were for me, really, more than anything. Mm. And so my, my next question was going to be, like, and I know this sounds very ignorant. I know this sounds ignorant, but going into it, I said, I thought to myself, he never placed at the state tournament. Like, why did he want to wrestle in college? And like now seeing, like, like you say, like you love wrestling and it didn't matter what style it was. Like it, you just had a love for the sport. Um, is that, is that what you would say compelled you to continue wrestling through college? Yeah, man, it was hard. Uh, it's hard because in my mind and like my high school mind, it was mm -hmm. like win state go D one. And there's not really anything else that matters. You right. know, like I want to do Greco and freestyle, but like the immediate things, that was all that matters. So I was pretty sad that I was going D three at first. And then uh, I was, uh, I was pretty, pretty ignorant about the whole thing myself. 
and it was a huge ego check. And I don't think I would have been successful if I would have, you know, went any other way. Um, there's so many advantages to it. Like for one, I was, I had like hands-on attention all the time. And if I was like a guy struggling to make it on a D1 team, like I was going to try and walk on, uh, I might've, you know, I would have been a practice partner for a lot of it until I worked really hard and I hopefully got a starting spot and all this stuff like that. I was the starter right away. I did a ton of wrestling and I had the coaches focused on me because I was motivated and they knew I wanted to get better. So they were mm -hmm. focused on me and uh, yeah, it was awesome. But you know what my college coach basically will say is like, if you love wrestling, just don't stop, you know, like, right. and, and I think my career really kind of like, I'm just really glad I didn't stop because yeah, I had every reason not to continue. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, man, I was a little crazy. Like, uh, um, <laughs> I still, I felt like, crazy. I felt like I can be uh, extremely successful. And I didn't really have much to prove, you know, to back right. that up. But I, I just, I just believe that I, I like, I had it in me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, man. So, um you know, I was just a little crazy and I just, I just like knew I could win. I knew I could find a, a way to win. And it was, it was kind of through perseverance and, uh, and through, yeah, being a nut job. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. And then talk, talk, what was the decision to wrestle at Elmhurst? Yeah, man, it was not glamorous at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it, like, I know I love my experience there, but I mean, getting recruited was not glamorous at all. Um, like, you know, these blue chip guys have their pick of all these like amazing exciting schools like right. I got a letter to my high school I just got a letter from Elmhurst College and it wasn't even specifically to me it was just to all the seniors oh they got gosh. a letter from Elmhurst College and uh, I, I knew Steve Marinetti my coach he's like a legend he uh he won NCAAs in 1995 and he beat Lincoln McElravey um, who was like Gable's like he, Gable claimed that this was his best wrestler so he upset Lincoln McElravey in the finals um and uh it will forever be a legend for beating the mullet but uh and then he went on to make a freestyle world team so like that was a big part of it was like and he coached me in freestyle like he was involved with Fargo here's the guy that's like you know he's a d1 national champ and not only that like he, he's like beat one of the best guys ever you know a three-timer he stopped the three-timer from you know um from becoming a four-timer and, uh, you know, he made a freestyle world team. And uh, what a lot of guys will say, like I talked to some of the older guys, they're like coaches now, is that like, and I've watched all of his old tapes too. Like Steve was, my coach was beating like, like everybody, you know, when he made that freestyle world team, a lot of guys that went on to be Olympic medalists and even Olympic champs and stuff like that. And he kind of made one world team and he tore his knee and then he kind of just retired. And that was enough for him. And, uh, he taught me a lot about like uh, a lot about life. And that was like, you know, he was like, I won NCAAs, made a world team. Like I'm, I was happy with myself and that it's hard to be happy with yourself no matter what you do. But uh, you don't meet a lot of guys in wrestling that are like, like that. Most guys who are Olympic champs are like mad that they weren't Olympic champs twice. <laughs> you know? uh, but, uh, but yeah, I had that guy there. So that was the most exciting thing about it. What's he but doing now? Me, He's still coaching there at Elmhurst College. Yeah. yeah. How many years has that? At least 15? <sighs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. And, you know, I think he had an opportunity to well, – he was coaching out here, University of Illinois, where I'm at now, like where he went to college. And uh, when the head coach stepped down, I think he had an opportunity to, you know, be a candidate at least for the head coaching job or be an assistant. But he likes his life in Elmhurst, man. And uh, he's <laughs> – Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was a big part of it. But basically, I got a letter. I showed up. I ate a sandwich. I walked across <laughs> campus, and we just shook hands. I was like, yeah, I'll come here. You know, that was all uh, it was. It was, just it was. Like, yeah, okay. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I was actually oh, writing man. letters to, like, D1 schools about how I wanted to walk on and all this stuff like that. And then after I won Fargo out of nowhere, I had a couple guys that kind of sort of talked to me. But, yeah, there weren't a lot of offers. That's uh, crazy. And then after I won Fargo and I, I beat a lot of kids that were going to these big schools and stuff like that, you know, um, there wasn't like any scholarship opportunities because all the money right, was so late in the summer and the, I kind of won one tournament. So a lot of these guys wouldn't know if it was just a fluke or what, 
but uh yeah a lot of it yeah it's just a fluke winning fargo <laughs> oh my gosh. yeah that's crazy but uh yeah that was it man dude a story i like to cite is my coach um mark mcknight what he signed his letter of intent where i don't know he took so he was third second and first in the piaa's um you know did good things at fargo and stuff like that and he was just getting stressed out about his college decision and uh and one day he got a letter from buffalo in the mail and he just uh signed his letter of intent faxed it to buffalo <laughs> and didn't even tell his parents about it he just did it he's just like just spur of the moment he's like all right i'm just gonna do it and they're like what did you do today mark and he's like not oh yeah i signed my letter of intent to go to buffalo and they're like, what <laughs> that's <laughs> um, awesome it's, it's funny and i mean like sometimes i mean i know for a fact like people stress out about this decision right like this yeah. is like you know because there's a lot of there's pressure you know you're like i want to go big 10 i want to have eyes on me i want people to value me and then also like i want to go to a good school i want to you know set myself up for life down the road um, but sometimes all it takes is just like walk eating a sandwich walk across the street shake it and you're like, <laughs> all right i'll get <laughs> yeah exactly i uh really cool. it is i don't know how these like kids you know like the top kids are getting recruited you know kind of not officially when they're like 15 and 16 and then and then like 17 18 and they got to make up their mind and they have all these choices i don't really know how they do it like i got a lot more respect for it now because uh i had that opportunity actually kind of recently now that i'm i'm 29 like picking <laughs> a new rtc i had like all these good options for rtcs and it was like really hard for me um to narrow it down and pick one you know, <laughs> you know? yeah but it's funny like i'm uh, I'm an adult now and I'm right like and imagine imagine doing equipped. it as imagine doing it as a 17 year old kid a 16 yeah and I I don't know how these how they do it but it, it mean it's exciting but it's extremely stressful and uh you know I think right. and really it's easy to value the wrong things in yeah it's exactly I think there's a lot of places with really cool wrestling rooms but it's like what about wrestling you know, <laughs> I, I, that's like the thing, like I've been recruited to places for Greco and they're telling me about all this stuff. Like, what are you going to, like what I'm going to get paid and this and that, and you'll be taking care of this and that. And I'm like, we, like, we've been talking like for hours and you never said anything about like what we're going to do about my wrestling. Right. <laughs> you know? I'll try so, to sell you. Yeah. I think that's the big thing is like, don't get like distracted and just like, think about the wrestling like is this the best wrestling situation that's what's hard to do mm. now what was the transition from high school wrestling to division three wrestling like for you man so like it wasn't exactly like how guys go to um like a d1 school from from high school and they're just getting beaten up for a long time like there's just like a period of that like i was i was scoring i was doing well and then shortly i was kind of beating everybody like shortly after I was beating everybody in the practice room. And then I was kind of like 500 on my season because I was a starter. I was like kind of like 500. And then there was like a huge turning point um, halfway through the season where I just started winning. And uh, accidental. I almost, it was probably accidental. <laughs> if I would have guessed, it was just an accident. Well, I think, I don't know what it was, man. Uh, <laughs> so I was, it might have been. Was, I, it might have been accidental. Like it was, <laughs> it was an adjustment because it definitely was like, all right, I've been training one way my whole life and I've been a, like super hard worker and this and that, and it wasn't working. And then, uh, and then I go to Fargo without caring and I win. So then it was kind of hard to like, kind of find the right happy medium between those. And like, mm. and like, how do I get myself to work out? Like, uh, and, like be super disciplined and work extremely hard, but kind of like trick my mind to think like, Oh, it doesn't matter if I lose you know <laughs> right, it's right, like right. uh there is not there is no like version of that that is reality but you can kind of try and like you can you can find like ways to cope and and uh and find ways to kind of take pressure off and focus on the right things and i had to build those but like yeah like it was on accident uh at fargo it was harder to repeat that on purpose you know and right. and as the years <laughs> went on I, I kind of had to mix the two, like bring the work ethic and even up the work ethic and still kind of 
um, stay grounded in like what actually matters and, uh, you know, not comparing yourself and focusing on what you can control and all these things like that. Like it's really hard to build the, uh, right, uh, recipe for success. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that a lot of that was going on and, and then, you know, things were starting to click and I had in my head, like I can be really good at this level and I can be good, you know, even past this level. And Marinetti was like, just feeling the fire like he was awesome and I was extremely motivated and um yeah I, I won a really big match at national duels and helped the team win and then you know things started turning around and uh towards the end of the year I took third at the regional which normally like nowadays would qualify you for nationals but back then it was top two and then it just went to bids there was a bid system so if it were the, the next year I would have been a national qualifier but my freshman year, I ended up taking third at the regional and wrestling like a really great tournament, but uh, I didn't make it to nationals. But then I went to nationals and I kind of saw what it was about. And the, the next year I was there and I was an all American. And then it was kind of like walking up a staircase. I was just, I just did better and better every year. It was what kind was of feeling uh, like, what was the feeling like winning the national title, finally being on top, um, you know, standing on top of that podium? What was that like for you? It was awesome, man, because like things don't really come easy to me, uh, you know, as you can, as you can tell, especially around those times and in high school and stuff like that. So it was just it was a huge relief, uh, to be honest, like I just put I, like a trick in my mind to like kind of relax. But like knowing inside, like I'm super nervous and like I put so much into this and I think I put a lot more into it than you know any of those other guys on the podium as far as like what I'm doing in the off season stuff I think I was training at the level of like most of the D1 guys but I was wrestling D3 and I still hadn't won it yet you know until my senior year I won it my senior year and it was just um yeah it was an amazing feeling and uh, like most of it was relief and happiness and just kind of just like vindication of like yeah man like I knew I can do this and I did it you know and uh right, right. and like I told myself I would be this guy. Like, it's pretty crazy to actually be this guy, you know, like um, kind of having a picture of the, the national championship bracket. I saw somebody else win when I was a freshman on my phone all those years and being like, I'm going to be holding that, you know, and, and yeah. kind of like doing visualization stuff of me wrestling and winning it and, and even visualizing somebody putting the medal around my neck or getting that bracket board and stepping up to that podium and then actually it happening. It's, uh, yeah, man, it's one of those moments you'll never forget, and it's totally yeah. worth it. <laughs> oh, man. Dang. Well, and so my next question I have written down here is, is what inspired you to go compete at that university or, or senior level? Um, and like, like you said, you're like, I want to stay in the sport, but why did you decide to compete as opposed to just move to coaching or, or another option that would still keep you involved in the sport, but also, you know? like after college you're saying yeah like after college man i uh just the feeling of performing and, and training um training to you know compete that's like something special like uh right. that's something that's addicting um and in a good way you know it's a healthy thing to be addicted to i mean not always there's some guys that lose their wives because they they <laughs> you know all they care about is training. yeah there's you know? a line <laughs> yeah there's a line but you know what i mean it's a it's just it's one of the best feelings that we get as wrestlers is, is training hard and, and coming out victorious, like putting it on the line and dealing with everything that, that, you know, is going on internally, mentally with like getting ready for a tournament and all that anxiety and, and questioning yourself and, and dealing with doubt and all that stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a person that uh, I, I love that. And I almost wish that, it some days I wish that it was in something that was uh was like maybe uh something that was helping the world a little bit more but uh yeah not just not more. just a, an athletic event not yeah just. not something not selfish but this is like this is my war like this is the war I chose and uh this is what I like built the skills to be successful are in and uh hopefully when I'm done I can transfer it over to something else but I know right now I spent a lot of time and I invested a lot of stuff into this. And uh, yeah, man, I just felt like I won nationals in D3 and I graduated. There's no red shirts. 
he had four years. And I was like, man, I'm just, I'm just getting good. I'm just getting good. And that's over. Like I just, I'm just getting yeah. good, you know? And uh, it just went so fast and it was so magical and great. But I was just like, man, I hadn't even like come close to reaching my potential, like, not even close. Mm-hmm. And that's something like Marinetti would talk about all the time. He's like, you're making all these mistakes and you're still winning. Like, think about if you just could nip these mistakes, mistakes in the butt, <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like, man. And I, I, and it's true about my wrestling. Like it's all mental, but like, even when I win, like there's so many things that could be better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? And I'm just like, I'm it just getting is. good, man. I'm just getting good. And like, you know, working really hard for a long time and winning, you know, Fargo at 18, I just felt like, oh, wow, I won something awesome. Like, this is a great feeling. And then through college being, like, more and more and more successful, and then it just went, like, bam, like, so fast. And I'm just, like, I'm just figuring things out here. Like, I can't be done, you know? And uh, I'm glad that it worked out, man. (laughs) And that's how you, you know, maintained that motivation. Like, you've been competing on the senior level, you know, for the better part of a decade, right? Like, since, like, what, 2013, 2014? Yeah. Yeah. So 2013, 2013 was when I started full time, but yeah, I was doing it a couple of years, even, you know, when I was in college, like probably since 10. Right. Wow. But, oh my gosh. but yeah, full, a full, a full decade. Yeah. So wow. full time, full time, uh, since after college. So full time since the summer of 13. Mm. And so, and just that, that mentality of I'm just getting good now, like, let's keep it going. I don't want it to be over. And that's how you carry that motivation all the way through, you know, that yeah, man. 10 year gap. It's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, Joe, what was your first experience competing overseas? Like, man, my first experience overseas, I was super pumped. I made the, uh, I made the university world team. Uh, I think is the first one I competed overseas and <laughs> I got there and I could not get myself to sleep, you know, oh. like, like jet lag. And uh, yeah, like, and I was extremely nervous. I wasn't handling, like, I was ex- so excited to wrestle. And I think I was handling things well, but I was not getting sleep. And I was like, I think I was worried about things more than I normally would be. I wasn't like, uh, at the right frame of mind, uh, maybe uh, completely. But I had like a new, I had a coach I've never had before. And he was like really worried about me making weight. And I'm like, dude, I got this. Like, I'm a, I'm a crazy weight cutter. I'm like, get off my back. I don't like people like constantly being on me. I'm just letting me do my thing. But, (laughs) but it was, it was a great experience. Um, But I went out there and I wrestled a guy from Poland who ended up being pretty good. Uh Um, But he, he tuned me up kind of, and I ended up beating him later um wrestling him a lot later but the crazy thing is everything happened so fast again like I was wrestling on the senior level state side and uh I wasn't getting to go overseas like some of my teammates and I was living on a couch and I wasn't making like barely any money at, at first at first I wasn't making any money then I was making a tiny bit of money and uh and then out of nowhere like boom I made I made the university world team and then boom, I made the senior world team. So then I immediately was in the senior world championships after the university world championships. And that same Polish guy I wrestled did pretty well at those world championships. And uh, he did, he did really good uh, last year too. So I wrestled some guy that I didn't know anything about, but I was kind of pissed. I'm like, man, I just lost to this guy, but he ended up being pretty good. So it's okay. But (laughs) uh, dude, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt you. I love how much you just talk about your wrestling career as like, stumbling into situations and you're just kind of they're just kind of just coming up and like you're le- <laughs> I, like it's clear you're leaving out like you know there's hours of hard work going into this and oh like, absolutely days and, days and days but it's funny how you talk about it. you're like and then bam i'm i'm on the team and bam i was just like it's all happening well, all at once and well, I was, man, well that's how funny. my career has been though man yeah. <laughs> senior level it really oh, hasn't boy. been it hasn't been consistent like anything it's like I make the world team I, I tear my knee I like I went you know I, I went trials or whatever tear my knee I break my jaw or whatever like it's just been up and down and up and down and before I made that first world team I literally was looking around like not making enough money like I might have to stop wrestling I can't I don't know how long I can keep doing this yeah. like I burned through my savings at first and then like 
started making a little bit. And uh, the more successful you are, the more money you make, you know? So like, I really had to prove myself, but like day in, day out, I was getting beat up. Like I didn't scare a score a point in the Minnesota room. Cause I wrestled the same guy every day. I didn't score a point on him for three years. And I made the world oh team gosh. without scoring a point in the practice room. <laughs> you know? So it really was like, bam, out of nowhere. Like, wow. Just fighting really hard, fighting really hard, like being successful, but not, successful enough you know to make like a national team or world team and then out of nowhere I just I like I cut the weight for that senior year trials like I came back from university worlds wrestling at 85 kilos and out of nowhere they announced the non-olympic weights so the first year they were doing it and it was 80 kilos that year so I was cutting a ton to make 85 and then you know after making weight I blew up like 30 pounds you know <laughs> And then, uh, and then I'm just like, I got 10 days. I'm like, I'm going to try and make 80 kilos. So I just oh showed up, <laughs> I showed up. I lost like 30 pounds and like, like, yeah, 10 days. And I made the world team, <laughs> you, you know, and everything changed for me. Wow. Yeah, What's man. I'm sorry, dude. What's the most you've ever cut ever? I don't know, man. It's, I, it's, it's bad, man. I, I try not to yeah. do it. Anymore. <laughs> But, uh, like, you could ask, Pat, like, Pat Smith or any of those guys that have been around me, like, they'd see me, yeah, lose 30-something pounds in a short amount of time. And then, you know, after I weigh in, especially back then, it was day before weigh-ins. Right. Yeah, I weigh in at 80 kilos, which is 176. And before I went to bed that night, I was 206. You know, like, I gained all that back <laughs> in one night before I got on the mat. It was, it was insane. Uh. Oh yeah. Gosh. Have you seen, has that affected, has the one day weigh-ins, has that affected your wrestling at all? Yeah, man. I can't you do that anymore. Yeah you, cut, <laughs> yeah. you definitely can't cut 30 pounds. Oh. Yeah. I can't do that anymore and expect to perform, but it's good, man. Like I think like wrestling, I was wrestling 98 kilos and I was wrestling 80 kilos. And, uh, sometimes I wrestle, you know, 85, 84, whatever the weight class is. But now like, but I was like going, I was cutting a ton or I was getting really, you know, big. And then I it just makes sense that I kind of just go in between those two. And that's what I'm doing now. Right. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe that makes the most sense. <laughs> yes. But I was just cutting weight or gaining weight just because, like, again, like the same reason why I go, went Greco it was where the opportunities were. It was like my coach was like, you can make the team if you go 98 kilos this year. And I made the team. And it's like, you could. You know, and like with 80 kilos, he was like, you know, I'm not going to tell you to do it because he was scared I was going to die. But he was like, <laughs> if you can make that weight, you're going to be a hammer. And I was like, all right, man, I'm going to do it. You're like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're going to die. I'm scared for you, and it already happened. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> man. Okay. So talk about, you know, talk about 2019. Um, your experience, you know, you have this win over Provisor. He's a longtime rival. You make the team. Talk, talk about that whole, you know, Final X run, World Championships, and, the, and coming down from that, and then your thoughts coming into 2020. Yeah, man. Uh, making a team in 19 was so great. And, uh, me and me and my buddy slash coach slash teammates Robbie Smith we you know we did it together you know and it was just really cool experience because when I was training at the Chicago Regional Training Center which is like Northwestern's RTC like I wrestled with the college guys every day folk style and then I kind of would do my own thing when it came to Greco I do my Greco workouts with Robbie and I bring in a training partner and I had my own strength coach um Robert Peters the guy who wrestled uh in high school with me and like I kind of had a team around me um and I had some people that helped me with recovery in the city you know so going back home to Chicago after training in Minnesota for six years was nice because I I was around a lot of family a lot of friends that were willing to help me and it was kind of like being an MMA fighter like I, I had a team built around me when it came to Greco and then I had like my obligations with the university where I would help out a lot it's kind of like a pseudo coach you know, uh, as an RTC guy, kind of helping guys with folk style. But, um, yeah, man, it was crazy because, um, like I said, there was so many ups and downs. Uh, you know, I made that first world team in, in uh, you know, in, what, 13 and 14, uh, 14 and then uh, 
I got to be like ranked six in the world. I was meddling every tournament and then I didn't even make the world team. And then in 2016, I go up all the way to 98 kilos and I make, I, I win Olympic trials and I make the team, but then I don't qualify the weight. So I don't compete in the Olympics and I tear my knee doing that. So then I tear my knee. I come back in 17. I tear my knee immediately again. I wrestle. I take second in the trials with like a torn knee. Uh, and then, and then I, I wrestle freestyle trials for fun. And I get beat up by, uh, I get beat up by uh, David Taylor. Then I get my second knee surgery after that. And then, so then I come back. I'm living like a monk after that second knee <laughs> surgery. Like I'm doing more things right than I've ever done. And uh, it was crazy and I'm doing everything right. And I'm seeing like a lot of people are excited and the like coaches and stuff like, wow, like you're like a different person. And right before trials, the guy on my team broke my jaw. He just punched me in a soccer game, broke my jaw. So it was oh like, gosh, that's a heck of a punch. Yeah. He was, he's a heavyweight. He's like 300 some pounds. And he, and he didn't even punch me. Like I wasn't even looking at him. I was walking away from him and he, he ran up and punched me. And yeah, man, it was messed up, but you know, so I'm trying just to claw my way back. Um, I, it was super emotional to win Olympic trials and not go to the Olympics. And then I had the right. torn knee and then, uh, you know, I come back and I tear my knee again and I do what it takes to stay on national team. And then I come back and I break my jaw. So like, I pretty much felt like I lost almost the whole quad. And so, like, I knew how good I was, and I wanted to not just make world team. I want to get out. I want to do more than that. I want to get a medal. I want to be a world champ, Olympic champ. And, you know, the years before 19, it was just, like, I couldn't catch any breaks, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, finally, getting, like, one tiny window of being somewhat healthy with, <laughs> with my body, and uh, I knew I, I could win. And, uh, and being provisor, a guy that's, you know, so hard to score on, so hard to beat. You know, I have no animosity towards Ben. Like, we're rivals. We wrestled so many times. But, uh, you know, it's still good to beat him. Uh, but, but yeah, man, for like, all that stuff is more just me making the team. That's what's important. And, and getting to Worlds and, like, you know, I'm back in the same position. I'm trying to qualify for the Olympics. And that's what I didn't do in 16. Um, so it was super emotional for me, too. You know, I uh, on and off the mat. Like I had my best friend die and another close friend die and I was dealing with all kinds of things. And then on top of that, I, I finally get back on a world team and I don't qualify the way for the Olympics. So I had a lot of figuring out to do. Um, I had a lot of, uh, you know, at times feeling sorry for myself at times and, and probably rightfully so sometimes right. and sometimes probably uh, didn't help me at all, you know, but uh, a lot of stuff to work through. and then you know, being the world team member in 19, it gave me um, the position to be the guy who, who goes to Pan Am Olympic qualifiers. And uh, I mean, yeah, like I'm, I'm jumping, I'm jumping again. There was a ton of stuff that went on in between that, um, that helped me, helped me accomplish this, but you know, it was my day and I felt it, man. And the whole time leading up to it, it was not going well. But then this is what I do all this like sports psych stuff for and meditation and journaling for and, and working on my mind is like you can feel like crap, you know, for months. But hopefully the day of the tournament, everything clicks and all the things you've been telling yourself work. And uh, that was the day for me. And I, I won Pan Am championships. And then the next week I won the Olympic qualifier and I qualified for the Olympics. And it's just a huge monkey off my back, man. Right. And uh now it's kind of crazy because I've just been waiting for trials to come back around yeah. and it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, so man. it's like, I got the other part of it done. So, um, yeah, man, uh, dealing with a lot of stuff mentally, uh, to believe in myself for when the time comes, you know, I got to win trials. Mm, be the guy. So, okay. First question is, um, uh, you qualified the weight. Is that still going to be qualified in 2021 or is it going to have to be requalified? No, it's qualified, man. All right, Dunzo. Don't yeah, have to yeah. Worry about that one again. Um, yeah, yeah what, absolutely. Did you going into the COVID crisis? You know, like you see it on the news, you see it in the memes. Like people are talking about it, and then you're not really thinking like, oh, it's gonna directly affect your life. You know, I know that for me. Like I wrestled at the PIAA state championships. Then the following Monday, 
all of Pennsylvania's closed. Everywhere's closed. New Jersey, New York, crazy. all the way up and down the East Coast, sweeping across the country. And it's just done. Every like the, everything goes into lockdown and it was so fast and nobody knew what was really happening. And they had all this noise on Twitter. And, um, but man, did you think that like did you think that the Olympics would be postponed? Did you think that the NCAA tournament would be canceled? You know, what were your thoughts going into the the whole COVID nineteen debacle? Man, I was so I had like just the blinders on, man. All I was thinking mm. about was Pan Ams and getting the weight qualified. And like, you know, the night before we wrestled, we had a meeting with USA Wrestling and they're basically they're like, You guys might not be able to wrestle tomorrow. Um, but just prepare like you are. <laughs> you know, <Right>. so <laughs> literally so I just straight up turned my phone off. Like I started seeing crazy stuff that was happening, like things were getting canceled and there was like a lot of um, questions and uh, a lot of guys on the team, you know, were like, what the hell is going on? You know, but like, like kind of that mental stuff I was like, I work on is like focus on what you control. Just, just mm-hmm. get ready, go to bed. Like you're competing tomorrow. And that's what I did in the turn kind of looking both ways. Like, are we doing this? Oh, we're doing this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it was awesome, man. And uh, yeah. it was awesome to compete, but it felt like the whole world was turned off. But then I, I blocked all that out, man. Like, I turned my phone off. Um, I focused on the task at hand. So then, you know, after winning and stuff, I turned my phone back on. I want to talk to, like, all my people. And, and, you know, a lot of people have nice things to say to me. And I'm yeah, happy right. about winning the tournament. And then it's just, wait, man, people are hoarding toilet paper? What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot know? people did that. Oh, yeah, wow. man. I turned my phone back on. It was just complete madness, man. Right. And, um, and for me, like I was gonna have to like reload and compete in Olympic trials really fast. So, um, yeah, like a couple only, weeks after qualifying yeah, the weight, not even a month. So Jeez. like, I was just like, when they actually got postponed for me, it was like, all right, whatever, you know, like whenever, as long as they're not canceled, but, um, but like part of me was like that's the responsible thing to do i'm happy they're doing that the other part of me is you know you get worried sometimes you're like but i'm i'm like i'm hot right now like i'm wrestling well right now you know and like uh but you know you you just gotta like work through that and just kind of believe in yourself and then at the end of the day i have no control whether or not my dreams come true like i just put i just do everything right so that i give myself the best opportunity um so worrying about it I know it, I can't stop the worrying, but I know that it's just ridiculous because it doesn't matter how good you are and how hard you train. Like you never know what's going to happen that day. Right. So, <laughs> you know, um, trying to do the right things and knowing that like, you know, when I win, like that I'm a, I'm an extremely fortunate person and I should be grateful mm-hmm. for everything that happened, but uh, it's not, no, there's no guarantees. So, you know, it was mixed feelings, but, you know, COVID started affecting my life big time shortly after that. But, like, I was kind of a little bit more relaxed and, like, this is okay than most people when it was happening at first. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. I was just thinking about how, like, th- this was a big part of our life. And, I mean, it still probably will be. But, like, I'm just, like, in the moment, I just remember hearing, like, yeah, Governor Wolf just closed the state down. And I was like, what does this mean for wrestling practice? Am I going yeah. to practice tonight? And my mom's like, we're not going anywhere, Jude. Yeah. Dude, it was- I felt bad, man. Especially for, like, the college guys I worked with at Northwestern. Like, there were mm. some guys that were having, like, such a good year. And right. and guys that aren't going to be able to have that year anymore. <laughs> you know, there was a couple guys who were seniors. And then there's a couple guys that are still going to be able to compete. Like, Seabass, he's competing for Rutgers now. And, like, and – uh and a lot of those guys will, but like not even, even the guys who weren't seniors um, and, and also Ryan Deacon, you know, like Deacon, it's their yeah. year to be a national champ, but um, there's a lot of guys who are like doing great. Like the guy that I worked with the most was Luke Davison and he was having a hell of a year. Yeah, he was. Two. And yeah, it's his freshman year, but that's a year he loses. That kind of stinks, man. Right. Uh, so I felt really bad for them. Like for me, like as long as the Olympics are happening, I'm a, that's, that's yeah. a good thing. You know what I mean? Like I'll be another year older and stuff like that. But if I, if I react to it right, I can just get better and it'll be a good thing. 
But, like, for those guys, no matter what, like, they lose a year. They don't get it back. So I felt, like, worse for them than I did myself. But, of course, it's been challenging for me, too. Yeah. Man. And I know that on, like, the personal side, like, I'm just so blessed that I even got to have a state championships, right? Yeah. I'm just so blessed because the Ohio State tournament got canceled. Uh, the PJW, which is the Pennsylvania Youth Tournament, it got canceled. And they were yeah. like, scheduled for the week after. Like, Dang. not even, not even, whatever. It was, yeah, it's crazy, man. It was, I was the last weekend. It was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then the next week, the world ends, right? And I didn't, it's I didn't, crazy, no man. And like, looking back, like, realizing how blessed I was to actually just have the opportunity to compete. It was, it was yeah, absolutely. Very, very providential. Um, Man, so so what's your plan for the next coming years? Do you you want to stay another quad to 2024, 2028 maybe? Yeah, I got to talk to my wife about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. Man. She she'll support like whatever I want to do and I think it, it uh it has a lot to do with what happens this next year, man. Um I make it to the Olympics and um and I and I like, you know, get a gold medal or get a medal. And I, and I actually, you know, even getting a gold medal, you don't know how you're going to feel. So, right. uh, and I feel good about myself. Like I'd love to ride off in the sunset, you know, but, mm. uh, but uh, we'll see what happens, man. Um, I might load up and do three more years because my body's hurting, but I'm still at like my best wrestling. Like I'm a better wrestler than I've ever been, but my body is starting to betray me. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> no but it's okay like you just got to work harder the older you get you got to work harder at um at recovery man and i know that like a lot of young kids are better at it now these days but um yeah I, a lot more stretching and and and, and stuff and cold baths and and kind of stuff that help you out and, and eating better and but um yeah man i can i can definitely wrestle at at the highest level for another quad or two if I really want to. But um, I don't want to be that old man who they have to tell, like, all right, man, it's time to get off the mat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you, uh, it's, you see that sometimes. There's a guy at uh, senior nationals this year in, like, or, excuse me, 2019, who was probably 50, probably yeah. didn't belong in a wrestling singlet. I can say that. Yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> So, okay, so, so Joe, what are some, some long-term goals you have, either on the mat, off the mat? What are some things you want to do with, with your life? What plans do you have? Yeah, that's another part of, uh, of uh, do I want to stay in wrestling for another quad or not? You know, uh, well, like a lot of the things, there, there's so many things that I was extremely interested in that I loved that I just completely gave up to wrestling because I felt like wrestling took everything uh, like took my all, like all my time, everything. If I wanted to be good at it, um, I was in high school, I was like a lot more, uh, I guess, well-rounded. Like I was a great student and I, I had like did, played multiple sports and did all, and was in all these clubs and doing all these things. And I think that's part of why I didn't reach my potential is I was trying to be good, trying to be great at everything. Mm. And uh, I kind of realized that like I can only be great at one thing. So I like I, I quit guitar and I, I you know quit all these other things that I liked. I quit all the other sports and uh, you know I was I wasn't really involved in clubs and I start started taking classes that weren't as hard. And, you know, being a little bit less right. ambitious with everything else in my life, and my wrestling really did get better. Um, I think there. Uh, there's some guys that can do it all. And for me, I kind of noticed that I can only do um, one thing at, at a high level, at least. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And, uh, but then kind of keeping like, I've been reintroducing a lot of my hobbies um, later on in life, which I love. And I mean, I want to, some, some random things I want to do. A lot of it's travel. Um, one, one big goal is I want to see all the wonders of the world. And it was like, I wanted to see him before I was 30, but COVID kind of ruined it. I got five. Yeah. I got five out of the seven or eight. Um, there's like seven, uh, they say, but there's mm -hmm. in some list, there's another one. So I got five of them. So I only need like two or three more. Um, I want to spend a year living, uh, at least one year living overseas. Um, mm -hmm. If I can, a year in every continent. You know, I want to write a book.
and I don't care if it's good. I just want to write a book <laughs> and actually finish the book. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, I want to film, I want to write and film a movie. Like I've taken a lot of screenwriting yeah. classes and, and yeah, again, I don't care if it's good. I just want to write and film a movie cause it's like something hard to do. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I have a lot of crazy travel goals. I want to go to all the national parks. Um, Dude, you're I'd ambitious. love to live, live in every continent. I'd love to, uh, yeah. And a lot of it isn't career based. It's like, uh, I, I want to spend a year out at sea. I want to spend a year Whoa. living in New York. I want to spend a year living in LA. Um, and, uh, I heard this thing that was cool once that was like, live in California before it makes you soft and, and leave before it makes you soft and live <laughs> oh. in New York before it makes you too hard. You know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, awesome. th there's a lot of things like that I want to do. And I got like a million of them. And of course I want to make my wife happy and she's from, she's from Belgium. So more likely than not, oh. I'm going to have to live in another country um, uh, coming up soon, which I'm excited about, but, yeah, man. Um, I love comedy. So I don't know if I like have what it takes to be like good at comedy, but I just Stand enjoy up. it. Yeah. I just enjoy it so much. Stand up and improv. And so like, I'd love to like do something where I was around that, if not mm. like actually in it. But uh, yeah, man. But oh, man. There's a ton of, there's so many things I want to do. Wow. It's so, I mean, my question was like, aside from wrestling, what else do you do with your time? But it, I mean, it sounds like you, you've, you got a lot going on. What, what, what else do you do with your time? I'm trying to, I'm going to start trying to learn Dutch because my wife's main language is Dutch. She speaks like five languages, but her Whoa. main language is Dutch and her family speaks Dutch. I'm going to try and I'm, I'm, I'm like doing a, a cinematography classes uh right now just online and uh stuff like that yeah i write i like write i write a lot like and i don't care that's one of the big things that i gave up um when i chose to wrestle it's like i liked writing all everything you know i like writing poetry i like trying to write you know stories or write like real like non-fiction write fiction and um you know write write jokes and write like write anything you know that's part of why journaling is good too because it kind of keeps me writing even if I'm not you know right. I was taking a lot of like comedy writing classes and writing uh sketches and writing um you know doing little portions of screenwriting so a lot of stuff like that man like when the world was still on I would go to a lot of open mics and I do a lot of improv and stuff like that too so mm. that's oh, kind of right. well, how, how I would give me spend your type my time five. <laughs> you have a type five set up no man not right. like that but do you, got, do you have a joke something that... not right now i'm uh -oh. just i'm i'm kind of a dirty comedian so nice. I, I, I don't mix wrestling and comedy even though Great. i did do stand up at a wrestling event once and it went pretty bad because <laughs> <laughs> they told me i had to be clean and everybody uh -oh. was there to, everybody was there to like watch wrestling so i got a few <laughs>, laughs Got a few laughs up top, and then I had a lot of like deer in the headlights, like throughout most of the set. And I was oh like, my oh, gosh! I'm not doing this. Yeah, man. But uh, for whatever reason, I'm a very dirty comedian. It's like it's not who I am in normal life, and uh, it's just who I am on stage. Some reason. <laughs> just, just great. Just see the uh, see the humor in it. I mean, like that's what it's about. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Dang. Wow. Yeah. Dude, this interview has been like an hour and a half hour and 40 minutes um, <laughs> yeah man geez. and i still have more questions but joe dude from the bottom of my heart thank you for being available i'm sorry that i had to push you off so long you know there was no worries man all that sort of stuff but i really appreciate you um it's fantastic that you would take the time and come on my my stupid dumb little dumb dumb stupid head little podcast and just uh you know talk to us a little bit but <laughs> um joe is there any other last thoughts you'd like to leave us with no, man. I I think you should keep going on this, man. I think you're you're really good at this. So have fun with it. And I think that uh, so what you're doing, I I hope uh, and I I probably have a good feeling for that is like in in a, a big part of it is you're trying to learn um and build your wrestling stuff. And it's kind of yeah. what I did. I did that a little bit too. Like the years I was injured, I would just start interviewing people, and uh, mm. I actually learned that from a comedian and a movie writer. Um, Judd Apatow when he was in high school he had uh, he hosted a radio show and he went around 
you know, like asking all the top comedians to, uh, you know, to come on his radio show. And that was like back in the seventies or eighties or whatever. So they thought it was right. an actual radio show. It was a high school radio show. And he literally interviewed the who's who of comedy. And then he became Judd Apatow who made all these famous comedy movies That's fantastic. and, you know, made all the Seth Rogen movies. But I think what you're doing is great, man. So, uh, just tell the people to keep listening to what you're doing. I think it's awesome. Appreciate you. And Hey, we are for sure going to have to get you back on here again. There's still yeah, man, lots anytime. of stuff to talk about. Uh, I will give you more notice so you can maybe write a couple jokes and entertain us. <laughs> yeah, I looked, I looked through my stuff. I haven't been going up on stage, but I looked through my stuff that's a little bit more uh, appropriate. Because yeah. I'm not all dirty, but I... You better. My mom listens to this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Dude, so who, I'll, who I'll did you interview? You. Who did you let tell jokes on your podcast? No, mama, <laughs> I promise. It's not nothing bad. You, you better not be. Better not be. Jeez. Yeah, I don't want your, your show to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> just take us off the air. You're just like, yeah, that's it. Home out advantage is done. Just delete it. That's yeah, okay. man. In the event you come on and, and you, you tell a, a bad joke, I'll just edit it out. Or pretend like there it never go. happened. Okay. Uh, or we'll I'll just be, be like, oh, I can't hear you. You, you cut out. And then I'll, <laughs> uh, at least my, my tail will be covered. But, I'll uh, just do an an hour of my dirtiest stuff, and you'll just oh, have great. to try, try and <laughs> find that advantage <laughs> after you'll hours. Have, you'll have to find like one one clean joke in there. Oh man, I, yeah, man. Over here Absolutely. with Joe Rao, and then it just cuts like kind of the middle. And I was like, all right, Joe, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Jeez. But yeah, it's it's not that I can't do clean comedy. It's like when I know that that's the only um stuff that i can do it's hard you feel like a cat with a sweater on that doesn't want to walk you know it's like, yeah, so it sounds like it. you just can't do clean comedy is what i'm hearing <laughs> <laughs> no it's like some of my jokes are clean but i know when they have to be clean it's right. like hard to do it you know <laughs> i'm just yeah, giving you a hard time but, uh, right, absolutely man. Hey, man i'll let you go i appreciate you and i'll, uh, I'll keep in touch yeah. all right man thanks for having me on have a good one all right see you joe oh, peace